Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark, Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right, you heard the man. My name is Mark Itell, and this is the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you, my friends, are in the right place if you want the information and the data that you need to make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. And I'm not talking about headline data. We go past the headlines each week. We dig deep into the data and give you the real scoop that you need to make these decisions. So you are in the right place. Dom and I do this each week right here on this station at this time. So thank you so much for joining us. Hey, but before we jump into the show, there's something, and I've never done this before, so bear with me. I just want to thank a group of people. We did a memorial walk last night, and there was a group of people that showed up, and it was a torrential downpour. I mean... My pockets were full of water. I could have carried goldfish home. And this went on for probably 30 or 45 minutes. And nobody complained. Nobody left early. Everybody stood there and shared tears of sorrow and tears of joy as we did this memorial walk for a life that was taken far, far too early from us. So I just wanted to say thanks to that group of people that stood on the bridge with us last night in the pouring rain. You mean so much to all of us. So thank you. And, uh, TKV Forever 33, brother, you will be missed uh, forever. So thanks for being a part of that last night. Now, thanks for indulging me. We're going to jump into the show again. My name is Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show. And our whole purpose of this show is to answer your questions. And you can get those questions to us at 561-291-8569. That's 561-291-8569 is the Anytime Hotline. Um, call or text your your number your questions to that number, and Dom will get get your questions on the air to us. So, as your questions are coming in, I want to touch on a few topics that that kind of jumped out at me this week. And number one is Janet Yellen finally came out and said they had no idea what the hell they were talking about last year when they said inflation was transitory, and I it, it just baffles my mind. I mean, God bless her for being honest, but. If you have followed me, the show, or the antics of the Mr. Mortgage team and our uh, armchair uh, economic, um, I don't know what you want to say. We're a bunch of armchair economists, and we've been talking about inflation since, uh, you know, probably the end of the the third quarter of last year. So it just startles me that the people at the highest level— either didn't know or they were lying to us that this was transitory. So at least she finally came out and admitted it. I still have no more confidence in their ability to navigate us through this. I mean, she's a lovely, lovely person. She reminds me of my best friend's grandmother in high school, and she was the sweetest, sweetest lady. But she also walked into the sliding glass door at her condo so many times that they put a big butterfly decal at eye level on the door so she'd stop bumping into it. Um, let's hope that um, Yellen and team and, the, and and Pal have this figured out and they're not going to keep bumping into that sliding glass door and slamming into that butterfly. But I don't say that to disparage her as a person, but if if the, 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 the people operating at the highest level, the ones in charge of our economic policy, are you know misreading things like inflation it just you know it just it makes me nervous but nonetheless hopefully we're on the right track and we've all acknowledged that this is no longer uh, a transitory problem and and they're doing their best uh, to get it sorted and the only tools they have available to them at this point are increasing interest rates which they, they're doing and they intend to do for the remainder of at least um, the foreseeable future so what that does to mortgage rates as a byproduct of the overall economy and the economy at whole is yet to be seen. But some super good news came out yesterday that um, the uh, jobs report was much, much stronger than anyone anticipated. So even in the face of what all of us are, you know, are calling a recession um, or a very likely recession, uh, the, the the job growth is still amazing. Um, and there was 5.2% wage increase, which, you know, isn't, isn't holding at inflation levels, but it's going in the right direction. So you hear me all the time talk about the strength of the housing market and one of the underliers being employment. So 
I was encouraged by those numbers. But, you know, the headlines still make me crazy. I pulled a couple that I wanted to share with you this week. And the only reason I do this is I'm not I'm not busting anybody's um, butt about this. I just I want you to see the data beyond the headlines, because if you're just reading the headlines, you're not getting you're not getting the information you need to govern your decisions accordingly. I mean, it's like driving down the the road and watching the um, uh, what do you call it? the RPM gauge instead of the speedometer. It's giving you an indication, but you have no idea how fast you're going. You just know that you're going. So the headlines are kind of like, you know, the RPM gauge. Look at the speedometer. So here's one I pulled yesterday. U.S. housing uh, market crash coming. Economic analyst gives somber assessment. And there's a picture of a house getting pushed off of the cliff of a downward cycle in a chart. So super gloomy. And I printed it out and brought it in with me. And I look at this. And if I'm just skimming the headlines as a consumer and I see U.S. housing market crash coming, economic analyst gives somber assessment. I think we're in for trouble. But if you read the article, flip one page in, it talks about, you know, a a fall in home sales as buyers are put off by soaring housing prices. Well, we were due for a slowdown in activity. You know, it's not saying that prices are going to crash. It just says right there in the very first paragraph that there's a fall in sales volume. And the article goes on to say, I'm not going to bore you with the whole thing. I'll post this on the Facebook page. Go to Facebook and type in the Mr. Mortgage Show and the show page will pop up and all this data will be there. He says it's very likely that there'll be less demand for homes in part due to people not being able to keep up with the really crazy, quote, home price growth. Well, we all know that's the case. And now that you add the increased interest rates, even though they're still ridiculously low historically, they're, you know, darn near twice where they were last year. It, these The homes are starting to feel super expensive. All this makes sense. But it it basically says, here's the next paragraph, homes will probably end up sitting on the market for a little bit longer before they sell, just a little bit longer. Figures show that both pending and new home sales are falling. And if you read through this whole article, and I br- I'm not going to go through the whole thing, here's one thing I find super interesting. I think there's a big dis- distinction between a cool off and a crash. The 2008 financial collapse which is still really fresh in everyone's mind, it's really important to point out that there's a big distinction between the two markets. And I'm not going to read any more because that spills into another article that I want to touch on. But here's another one. Zombie foreclosures tick up as overall foreclosure activity accelerates. And you've heard me talk about this before. We're simply talking about foreclosures that have have uh, been in the pipeline for quite some time and banks weren't able to foreclose for quite a while and now they're just catching up. But And basically that's what this article says too. But here's one thing I thought was super interesting. Now remember that headline. It just says that zombie foreclosures tick up, overall foreclosure activity accelerates. And then in the same article, it says foreclosures are up 12.7%, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Now I'm looking for it. We're seeing properties where the borrower was already in default prior to the moratorium re-enter the foreclosure process. Now, however, zombie foreclosures only represent one in every 13,200 properties and are down. Wait a minute. Didn't the headline just say they were up and are down 6.3% year over year, meaning that most neighborhoods have no zombie properties. So that's what I mean when I say read past the headlines and read the real data because there's not a pending market crash, not in our near fu- in near uh, term future. Un- uh, unemployment rate continues to remain uh, low. People who own homes now uh, are well qualified. They were fully underwritten by today's standards and none of those risky loans were used to buy the property. So you hear the music, that means we're going to dive into a very short break. Dom and I will be back with you in two very short minutes to address all of these issues and more of your questions.
Hey, it's Mark Eitel here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property, and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Here's another five-star review. My wife and I own a small business. And the way our accountant file our taxes, we don't show much income on tax returns. Because of this, it looks as if we don't make the money. This was a problem for our bank when we applied for a mortgage. But not for Mark. He verifies our income by using our monthly bank statements. Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team made a big difference for me. Yes, I am happy to recommend Mr. Mortgage Mark. Hey, it's Mark Eitel, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show, where Dom and I will be here each week right here, same time, same station, and we're going to answer all your questions. And you can get those questions to us at 561-291-8569. That's 561-291-8569. That's the Anytime Hotline. Call or text your questions into that number. And that number pushes to my office during the week. So if you want to talk to a live person during the week, just call that number also, 561-291-8569. Or visit the website, www.mr.mortgage. That's mr.mortgage, never a dot com. And you can submit your questions there through the contact us button. I've got my computer up in front of me. Dom's running the board with a computer in front of him. And we'll see those questions come in and get you on, uh, get your answers on the air. And lastly, you heard me reference the Facebook page each week after the show. I upload all of the articles and the data that we use um, during the show to answer your questions all there. So you can read through them and see for yourself. I mean, we're not. We're not hiding anything. We're not trying to sell you anything. I want you to see the data that we're using when we're answering these questions for you. And a touch more data before we dive into your questions. I do see them coming in. Dom's got some stacked up, but I do want to just throw this out at you because you hear me all the time say how different this market is than the market of the early 2000s. And most of you know I've been around in the mortgage world since 1999. So I lived through these numbers, but I've talked about supply, I've talked about demand, I've talked about all the differences, but here's a, a huge fundamental that often gets overlooked. At the height of the boom in the um, early 2000s, 620 credit score is kind of the cutoff. I guess let me, let me start by throwing that out there. A 620 credit score over that, you're qualified for conventional financing under that, you know, FHA, VA, but in the old days, there were, that was classed as subprime. There were a lot of very aggressive loans in that lower credit score. That's why this, this article is important. So to, to go back to where I was, in 2006, at the height of all of the acceleration into the bubble, over $300 billion, with a B, dollars were lent to borrowers with sub-620 credit scores, right? So a lower credit score borrower with a much riskier loan in 2021 that number was 80 billion so the quality of the credit worthiness of the buyer today has never been stronger in addition to all the supply and demand things that i think 
are the fundamental drivers of this cycle where last time it was speculation. Go to the Facebook page and watch the video on supply and demand and then watch the video on why this market's different. You can find the Facebook page at uh, go to Facebook and type in the Mr. Mortgage Show. But enough about all that. You know, you, you hear me say it each week, and I'll continue to say it until there's a, a significant change. You know, it, if the market starts going the other way, we'll certainly be the first to warn you of that also. But all that data is there for your review. And now, my favorite part of the show, we're going to dive into your questions and, and, and help you with anything that you have going on and any particular questions that you have pressing. So with that, I'm going to throw it over to Dom and see what questions we have teed up. Kent sent us a text. Kent is asking, my wife's credit score is way better than mine, but most of our assets are in my name. Will this make it difficult to get a mortgage in my wife's name? Hey, Kent, that's a great question. Um, Hold on to that woman because it sounds like you need her credit score. Um, But no, just just kidding there. I'm sure you guys are a a happily ever after couple. But assuming that... um, her income will support the mortgage payment that you're applying for, then yes, that's fine because you can gift the assets necessary. If, if they're solely in your name, you as, uh, as the husband can gift the down payment and closing costs to your wife. Um, if you want to use her credit score. Now, if you're going to use just her credit score, you're also going to use just her income and whatever debt is on her credit uh, report. She's going to have to, be able to support that and qualify for the mortgage payment within those parameters. But um, assuming that all of that is is doable, then yes, you can um, you can structure this application the way that uh, you have intended based on your question. And then I would throw out at you also too, um, how bad is your credit score? I mean, a lot of people think their score is worse than it really is. Uh, and there are a lot of loan programs in that you know, as I just mentioned, conventional loan goes down to 620, um, FHA or VA down to 580. Although technically VA has no, um, you know, minimum score requirement, most lenders do put a score requirement in place. So 580 is a good rule of thumb there. Although we just got an FHA approved uh, last week for with a 570 credit score, which was pretty amazing. But, you know, if you want to talk that through and you have an idea of what your credit score is or you want me to pull it for you, I'd be happy to. Just uh, get in touch with us and I'll walk you through uh, any deeper answers to that question that you have. But hopefully that helps, Kent. Thanks for the question. Hey, Dom, what else do we have? Orlando wants to know, I bought a house with my brother a few years ago. We are both on the deed, but I'm the only one on the mortgage. If I buy a place on my own, can I rent this one to my brother? He's on the deed. Is that a problem? Hey, Orlando. So this is interesting because um, there's a couple tech technicalities that may apply. So on the surface, what you're trying to do makes perfect sense, but there's a, there's a guideline called departing residence. So there's a guideline called departing residence. There's a rule associated with can, how you have to structure it so you can keep the property and rent it out. And it's designed for people in a little bit of a different circumstance who want to keep their primary residence and buy another one and hold the primary as as an investment property. But where I'm going with this, Orlando, is depending on the type of loan that you want to qualify for buying your new property, you may or may not be able to do what you're thinking. So, for example, if you're going to use an FHA loan to purchase your new property, that new property has to be more than 100 miles away from your current property. If you're going to use a USDA loan to buy your new property, now this is a little foggy for me. I'm doing it from memory, but I think it's a 45 minute commute rule. And I, that could be, you know, five miles if you live in LA, but they're defining it by a 45 minute distance between the two properties. And then the conventional loans, you hear them um, classified as Fannie and Freddie. They both have a, a different rules that apply, you may have to have had landlord experience in the past. And then with Fannie Mae, you know, the answer to that would be, yes, you can do what you're trying to do. And then with VA, you absolutely can. So here's, here's my only other thought in answering your question that maybe you considered this, but maybe you haven't. Something to consider is you could sell the property to your brother with a gift of equity. And although he, he currently owns the property, you're essentially allowing, you know, we would treat it, I guess, as a refinance in some instances because he does own the property, but he could have, he could uh, use your portion of the equity as a gift 
and refinance it into his name so that you're not no longer encumbered by that property. But there's some nuances to that answer. So I'd love the opportunity to talk you through it at, at a, a deeper level. Um, if you have questions about that, give us a shout. 561-291-8569 is the Anytime Hotline. But as you hear me mention all the time, that pushes to my office during the week. So I hope that helps. I know there's uh, there's several little rules and nuances that apply to that answer. So I'm going to throw it to Dom and see if we have time to get another one in. Sean just sent us this email. Sean's asking, I was in an accident and on disability for a year. I just got my settlement check, so I have plenty of money for a down payment, but I've only been back to work for a couple of months. Can I still qualify? Hey, Sean, that's a great question. Um, so I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to say yes based on several um, clients that we've had in similar situations. And one of the big caveats are you're back to work. Um, so there's some, I'm making some assumptions, and you'll you'll have to clarify this. If you have gone back to work in a similar role that you were in prior to the accident. So, you know, if you were an electrician, you're an electrician again, you're not selling insurance because you're not established and you haven't established an income at that, that new career. But assuming the role that you're in now was, was similar to the one or is rather similar to the one that you had before the accident, we check the one box. Assuming the accident is, you know, documentable, you mentioned a settlement check. So I'm guessing there's a lawsuit all of that is easily doc documentable. So we've checked that box. Now, if there's any negative credit items that were accumulated during that time off while you were on the dis disability, which is not uncommon because you're living on far less money while you're going through this <clears throat> recovery period, if that's the case, we may have to satisfy some of that, those negative items and we can walk you through that. But to answer your question, yes. So here, here's one thing I want to throw out there. That this is a very similar circumstance, but there were different nuances. This particular individual had a, a start date scheduled in just a few months, but hadn't gone back to work yet. So we were unable to verify that the disability payment was going to continue long enough into the future to use the disability income. So we needed her to get back to work, reestablish income, and then we were able to use that reestablished income to get her qualified. So I just throw that out there. That is kind of a caveat. And if anybody has questions about that, just give us a shout. 561-291-8569 is the Anytime Hotline, which also pushes to my office during the week. But you hear that music rolling up behind us. That means we're going to jump into a short break. Dom and I will be right back after these very short two minutes to answer more of your questions. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of The Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property, and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Here's another five-star review. We started our loan with a different company. They said we were approved, but at the last minute they told us there was a problem. I still don't know what went wrong, but thankfully our real estate agent told us about Mark. I was pretty stressed, but it's the perfect house so we gave Mark a shot. He got it done. I'm not sure what was different but I don't really care. We even got a better interest rate and with less money out of pocket than the first guy quoted us. It was a great surprise. Yes, I'm happy to recommend Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. 
Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. I told you that was going to be a short break. Uh, this is Mark Itell. You are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show, where we strive to give you the info you need to make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. So if you have questions, you can call or text them to 561-291-8569. That's 561-291-8569. Or visit, visit the website, www.mr.mortgage, never.com. Just type in mr.mortgage. And you'll find the website there. You can um, use the contact us button or contact us link to submit your questions. Dom's watching the computer. I'm watching the computer and we're getting your questions on the air. So with that being said, let me throw it over to Dom and see what we have teed up for questions. We have a text from Joanne. Joanne's asking, how much of the total value of the house can a person typically take for a reverse mortgage? Is there a rule of thumb for this? Hey, Joanne, that's a great question. Um, there's not a hard and fast rule and uh, rule of thumb because there are a few, you know, variables that have to be considered. But I'm going to answer your question by saying most often you're looking at, um, you know, 50 to 60 percent of the current value is, you know, pretty typically where you're, you're going to land. But there's not a quote unquote rule of thumb multiplier that we can apply to it. There are three major factors in determining the amount that you can borrow with a reverse mortgage. One is your age. Um, the older you are, the more you can borrow because they use, you know, a mortality index to determine, uh, you know, th they're guessing your lifespan based on your certain age and, and how long that, you know, they're going to carry this note. The value of your property obviously is going to be um, part of it. And then the current interest rates, because with a reverse mortgage, you're not making any payments. So the interest accrues. So the lower the interest rates, the more money against the value you can borrow. The higher the interest rates, the faster that balance is going to grow. So obviously the balance is going to start or the loan amount will start lower. The encouraging thing is that right now today, and I'm glad you asked that question because I do want to touch on just th this subject for one second because reverse mortgages get a bad name. And you hear me say it all the time. They're not right for everyone. I mean, as many people as I talk to about reverse mortgages that we start to take through the process, as many that we move forward, we give them the advice that it's not the right product for them. So it's, you know, you do want to have a consultation to make sure this makes sense for you financially based on your goals. So I want to touch on this. So we mentioned your age, the value, the interest rate. That's what the determining determining factors are. Most people, their properties have never been more valuable than, than they are right now today. You've got more equity than you've ever had. You know, inarguably, prices are way up. Values are way up. Interest rates, even though they've um, increased significantly since the beginning of the year, they're still historically low. I mean, you're still looking at, you know, start rates in the, the fours and fives on a reverse mortgage. And we can walk you through that. It's a different index than, a, you know, a forward mortgage. So you've got a historically low interest rate and you've got an all time high property value. It stands to reason that you may have more equity to access now than ever before. So I just throw that out there because it's worth, if you're considering it, if it's something you've been kicking around, now may be a wonderful time to start that conversation with someone. And if you don't have a someone, we welcome the opportunity to talk you through it. You can call our office. Um, I'll be happy to talk to you directly, but the, it's just something to consider. And a lot of people in the senior community are getting pinched by inflation more than, you know, any other portion of our society. I pull, I drove in this morning and I saw gas prices at 476, you know, groceries are up, everything's up. You leaning on that equity may be the right option for some people in this uh, economy that we're in. And listen, Janet Yellen came out and said, we had no idea what we were talking about. So <laughs> I don't know if they have any idea how they're going to get, get us out of it, out of this. So there might be some logic in, you know, planning for lean times ahead and leaning on some of that equity, especially if you're already deficit spending into your savings or other um, assets. If social security is not getting it done 
or retirement dividends aren't aren't getting it done. And I'm again, I'm not suggesting it's right for everyone, but it's probably not a better time um, than it's ever been to talk about it with w- with someone. So anyway, I throw that out there. I hope that answered your question. Um, I would say fifty to sixty percent. And keep in mind, with that start number, you have to pay off any mortgage that you currently have. And then there's a set of closing costs that are taken out of that balance. So you're not going to get that entire amount available to you, especially if you don't have, I mean, especially if you do have a mortgage currently on the property. So hopefully that answers your question. I would welcome the opportunity to dive deeper with you on that. um, Should you have any interest, just give us a shout 561-291-8569. So let's keep your questions rolling. I'm going to throw it back over to Dom. Susan just called with this one. Susan asked two questions, actually. My son is working on his credit to get his mortgage ready. Uh, what What is a good score to get the best mortgage rate? Why are scores so different? Aren't they looking at the same info? Hey, that's a great question. Um, and kudos to you for noticing that. So we use, as mortgage lenders, three um, repository scores. And we use the middle of the three for the very reason you mentioned. They're very different. And it, it's, they shouldn't be, right? Because they are looking at the same data. But to answer your question, the 620 is a good place to try to, to get over. And I don't know where his credit is now. A lot of people think it needs to be far higher than that to apply. But a 620 credit score gets you availability to what, you know, I'm air quoting conventional loans. Um, and then down to a 580 for FHA and VA. Now, I'm not saying 580 to to mislead you to think that's a slam dunk loan. Um, if you can get over 620, then FHA and VA become very uh, a lot easier as well. So I don't know where he is now. I'd love to have that conversation with you. If you know the score, share it with me. You just text it to us or hit us on, hit us on the website and email it to me. I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. And let me throw this out. I've got some pretty exciting news for everybody. Just about everybody. Um, is going to see a difference in their um, credit score. Anybody with derogatory credit anyway, medical derogatory credit in particular, is going to see a credit uh, score improvement in July 1st if one of these two criteria um, apply to you. So medical lates, $500 or less. And I'm, I'll, put, I'll post this on the Facebook page because I do need to confirm these numbers, but we just had a conference call with the the credit reporting agencies uh, this past week, they're they're not going to report on your credit scores anymore because most of the time it's your copay that you missed. And, you know, the the doctor's office is going after you because the insurance company didn't pay in full. So the credit repositories are, are, are noticing that and they're going to stop reporting those. And then another rule change is medical lates are now going to be required to uh, be 12 months old before they can report. So they're giving you time to negotiate with your insurance company for your copay and all that back and forth and the reimbursement. So July 1st, I believe is the date. I'll put that up on the Facebook page, but they're going to scrub medical lates off a lot of credit reports. So that should be super interesting. It should be helpful um, for credit scores. But yeah, Susan, great question. I would shoot for a 620 or higher. If you're well over that already, you know, it might make sense to jump in now. So the music is playing. That means we've got another break coming up. It's two very short minutes. If you hang in there with us on the other side of this break, we're going to continue to answer your questions. And if you have them, call 561-291-8569 and we'll get your question answered right now on the air. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Here's another five star review we kept our business above water with credit cards during the pandemic i'm glad we did business is better than ever but i didn't want to be a slave to those credit card payments i called mark about the rec loan he advertises long story short we did a rec refinance and paid off everything even the car now we only have the mortgage payment we're saving a bunch every month yes we are happy to recommend mark and the mr mortgage team 
Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com www.reallygreatagents.com Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561 291 8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show, and you heard the announcer. If you want your questions answered on the air, just call or text them to 561-291-8569. That's 561-291-8569, and uh, Dom will get your questions on the air, and we'll get you answered. Or you can uh, hit the website, www.mr.mortgage. That's mr.mortgage, never a .com, just mr.mortgage. And you can submit your questions there. And then I'm going to encourage everybody to visit the Facebook page. If you are on Facebook, um, just type in the Mr. Mortgage Show. And there you're going to find all of the data, the information that we've covered in today's show. I'll post it up there. So if you, you know, you want to uh, dive deeper into it, you certainly can. And if you have questions, you can just message us through Facebook also. So anyway, we're going to keep your questions rolling. I know we've got some stacked up. So let me throw it over to Dom. Manny emailed us this one. Manny asked, my wife and I want to jump into the Airbnb game. Is there a mortgage program for the Airbnb investment property? Hey, Manny, great, great question. I know a lot of people are looking at Airbnb. And hey, I talked to a guy this morning, Christopher, a um, friend of mine that's in a, in a uh, mastermind group, if you will, shared with me that one of his family members bought a property, Airbnb'd it, and paid off the entire loan in three years. I mean, phew, that's mind mind-blowing that that's... That's an opportunity. I mean, it's just so cool what technology has done in so many aspects of our life to to improve it. And whoever whoever dreamt that a single property owner could compete with a hotel chain and rent their properties out for profit on a nightly basis. So to answer your question, yes, you can use uh, a few different loan programs um, and the DSCR loan that you hear me talk about all the time. We can use that loan program. And in that instance, we're not even looking at your personal debt. I mean, your personal income. We are, we're, we're looking at the income generated from the property to support the debt of the mortgage. So if the property is cash flowing and there's a calculation that's applied to it, you know, average um, nightly rate, average number of months, I'll be happy to walk you through all that. To, but there, those calculations are applied to the property to determine what the income is on it so that we know it's going to cover cover the uh, mortgage payment. And then you can use a DSCR loan, uh, which is a super, super cool loan program. It's available for any um, type of rental property, uh, four units or, or less, but it works really well for the um, Air, Airbnb investor. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And uh, yeah, I congratulate you on jumping in. I know that um, people are really excited about it from an investment standpoint. And I've heard some good things. I've heard a couple of horror stories, um, but it, it really came down to people overpaying for the property and overestimating um, what the number of nights per month that it would carry. So I throw that out there, but I'd be happy to walk you through the calculation and see if we can help you get that uh, funded. 561-291-8569. That number is the Anytime Hotline, but it also pushes to my office during the week. So let's throw it back over to Dom for another question. Andrea just sent in this text. Andrea was asking, my dad left us two lots side by side for me and my sister. And uh, me and my sister want to build houses on the lots. What type of mortgage do we need? Hey, Andrea. Uh, congratulations. Nice, nicely done, dad, for leaving leaving you the properties. And yeah, I think that would be cool to live um, next to your sister, assuming that, you know, you, you guys you guys get along. But it would be pretty cool to have, you know, kind of like a compound set up, right, for the family. 
But I've, I'm going to throw a couple questions at you that you'll need to consider, and then I'll make some assumptions to answer the question. So the first thing I would ask if we were face-to-face -face is, are the two lots already deeded separately? Because sometimes, you know, a two-and-a-half-acre lot could be subdivided into acre-and-a-quarter parcels. If they're already two buildable lots, then that makes this a lot easier, uh, no pun intended. Um, and then secondly, do you want to do this at the same time would be a question um, because you're going to need two individual loans. And then are they currently buildable, meaning are they, you know, in, in a neighborhood that's already permitted for, you know, s single family residences? Because sometimes you can get a property that was left to you that's, you know, Florida swampland and you pull it up on the map and you realize there's not even a road leading out to it. I mean, there's a ton of developments that were platted out in the 50s and 60s and people were selling, you know, Florida swampland. You know, that's where, where those jokes all originated from. What was that movie? Oh, and now I'm trying, not Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, but there was a sales movie that was about real estate in Florida that they were, anyway, sight unseen purchases and they weren't even buildable lots. There's an area in Okeechobee called the Vikings and half of it is, you know, ready to roll and half of it's never going to be ready to roll. So assuming that it's buildable now and they're already subdivided, you're going to use a construction perm loan. And we've talked about those in the past. You're going to be able to essentially escrow the payments. You're not, it's called interest reserve. You're not going to make the payments while the home's being built. And then once the home's sealed and ready to move in, it converts to a mortgage and then you start making your payments. So I'll be happy to walk you through that. But to answer your question, a construction perm loan is what you will want to inquire about when you talk to your lender about that uh, scenario. So congrats, Andrea. And I hope that helped. If you have additional questions, just give us a shout. Let me throw it back to Dom for another one. Here's a question from Chris. Chris was asking, I've been renting a house from my dad for years. He's ready to sell me it. Can we count any of the rent I paid over the years like a down payment? Ooh, that's a great question. It's interesting. I understand the logic behind it, but you would have had to have an agreement in place that shows that you were, you know, a portion of your rent was going towards your down payment. I'm guessing you don't have that, but here's a thought for you. And I'll be happy to walk you through this. If you, if this at all is interesting or you have further questions, your dad can gift you the equity. You know, you don't have to have all of those rent payments, uh, you know, calculated as, you know, prepaid down payment, if you will, your dad can simply gift you the equity that you would need to buy the property. And I don't know if there's a current loan on the property or if your dad owns it free and clear. I mean, these are all things we would need to know. But you know, assuming there's enough equity in the in the property to gift it to you so that you have everything you need in the form of down payment and closing costs, and that amount could still pay off the mortgage, you know, whatever you guys determine, if it's worth four hundred thousand and there's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan, dad could gift you, you know, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars and you're off and running. So that may be a way to go with it and would be certainly simpler than trying to backtrack and create some some agreement. So hopefully that helps a gift to equity probably would be your easiest way to take that one to, um, to closing. But, uh, I'm going to leave it there. If you have additional questions, just give me a call and I'm going to throw it to Dom for another question. Donna sent in this one. Donna was asking, I'm worried about inflation, interest rates, and in a recession, we'd like to pull out some equity to have cash on hand. Can we still do this even though we're not paying off debt or lowering our interest rate? Hey, Donna, that is a great question. And wow, a lot, you know, I forget how many people have that misconception that the only time you can refinance is to lower your rate or to pay off debt. Because quite honestly, you can refinance anytime you want and pull out cash for whatever reason you want. I mean, we just did a transaction for a gentleman at 1.5 million. He's pulling out $800,000 in cash because he wants to invest in a business opportunity. So to answer your question, yes, you know, the easiest way to make logic of it for a borrower is lowering their rate, um, which typically reduces their payment or paying off debt, which reduces their monthly outflow. Um, so both of, both of those are strategic. But if you just want to pull out money to weather the storm, you're certainly entitled to do it. And hey, you're not alone. I mean, I just talked about that, you know, gas is approaching five dollars. It's crazy. There are a lot of people that are talking about if we go through a serious economic downturn and if they don't have the cash on hand to weather it, 
Well, they're going to be pinched because the reality is if you want to prepare for a storm, you do it before the storm, not when it's on you. And if you wait until something adverse happens, you may no longer qualify for the mortgage that would allow you to access that cash. So, and equity lines tend to dry up too if property values start to slide. So an equity line is another strategy that could get you some cash, but those, the availability of those fluctuate based, based on the market. So yeah, to answer your question, Donna, that's a great one. Yes, you can access that cash for whatever reasons that you see fit. You'll, assuming you qualify for the mortgage, we, we would be happy to help you with it. But uh, hopefully that answers your question. We are going to jump into a very short break. We'll be back with you, uh, with you in two short minutes to answer more of your questions. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Here's another five star review as a realtor i have a bunch of mortgage brokers to choose from but i prefer to work with mark and his mr mortgage team in this crazy market there is no room for error especially on the mortgage side mark's team moves fast keeps everybody in the loop and makes things happen they always give my clients a great deal and take the time to walk them through every step of the process when you're considering a lender i encourage you to talk to mark itell and the mr mortgage team Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com, www.reallygreatagents.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show, and you can get your questions to us at 561-291-8569 or the website, www.mr.mortgage. That's mr.mortgage, never a dot com. So, Speaking of questions, Andrea texted us back during the break and let us know those lots were already subdivided and already buildable. And there is a road there. So, yeah, that that was good. Happy happy for you, Andrea. Uh, let's throw it over to Dom and see if there are more questions. Yep. Lisa just emailed us. Lisa asked, our realtor is pushing us to get approved. I get it, but I'm wondering how long the approval is good for. What if we don't find a house for two months? Hey, Lisa, that's a great question, and I'm glad that you understand why your agent is pushing you for that because um, it's super, super frustrating to feel like I've got to go through all this paperwork process and get my approval before uh, an agent will even open the door for me. And I, I understand it's frustrating, but to answer your question, um, 90 days is the timeline that your credit is um, is good for. After 90 days, we need to refresh the credit report to make sure there's been no significant changes or impact to your score. But one thing that we do as a practice, and I would encourage you to do the same thing, and if you haven't found a lender, I'd love to be your guy, but if you're already working with somebody, um, they're going to refresh your credit score after 90 days. But keep your application file fresh. And what I mean by that is... Every time while you're out there looking, I don't care if it takes two weeks, two months or 10 months, every time a bank statement comes in, every time a, something, another document, a pay, a pay stub 
Um, that's what I was struggling for. An, uh, another document becomes available. Send that into the mortgage company. They're going to ask you for it. At least they should be asking you for it. But you're going to want to keep your file what we call fresh. So all of the most recent data is in the file so that when you do identify the property, you're not scrambling for the last, you know, two or three months worth of bank statements or last 30 days worth of pay stubs. You already have all that information um, submitted. So keep submitting it, even if it's a piecemeal um, submission along the way so your file stays fresh. And that applies to tax returns too. If you filed an extension and then along the way you file the return, go ahead and, and, and send that in because they're going to be asking you for it. We're certainly going to ask for it. And that's going to keep your file um, under write ready is what we call it. That's my definition is fresh, but you want to stay under write ready so that you can move as soon as you find that house. And don't get too frustrated with your agents out there if you guys are buying and they're pushing you for the pre-approval because honestly, in this market and and in any market, you want to show your ability and your willingness. And if you're asking a seller to take their home off the market and not consider other offers before you've even gone through the approval process, you're just you're kidding yourself if you think they're going to do it. It's in everybody's best interest that you have that pre-approval showing that you are ready, willing, and able to pull the trigger on this property. And it's gonna make everything smoother and move faster. And I wanna share one very quick story. You hear me all the time talk about the need for a great agent. And it sounds like you've got a really good agent if she's pushing you or he's pushing you to do this. But I work with uh, several agents and I work with several agents that are, are um, showing properties to the same type of buyer in the same uh, type of communities and having a wildly different level of success. And that's because of the skill level of the agent. So I would encourage you, um, if you don't have a really great agent, and I know Susan, you probably do, so this doesn't apply to you, but if you're out there and you're looking for a really great agent, um, give us a shout or visit that really great agent's website. We'll get you in touch with one. But um, yeah, we've had some great questions today. I wanna thank everybody for the questions so far. I hope the data that we provided, just put your mind at ease that this is still a very strong housing market, still a very strong employment market, and there's nothing on the horizon that should scare you away from buying a place. You should be cautious and negotiate the best possible deal but you shouldn't be frightened to move forward. So hopefully the information we shared helped. And if you found the show helpful, we certainly would appreciate you sharing it. Share it with friends or family or coworkers who are thinking of buying or selling real estate in the future. We'd be happy to answer their questions. So that's it. You hear the music. If you need us during the week, give us a shout 561-291-8569. Otherwise, have a fantastic week. Dom and I will be right here next week. Same time, same station. That's a wrap. Join Mark Itell next week for more thrilling edge of your seat discussions about real estate and mortgages right here on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Are you a rock star real estate agent? I mean, truly one of the best. If you are, let's talk. This is Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and we are currently expanding our network of rock star referral partners. If you think you have what it takes, we'd love to connect. Just visit mr.mortgage. That's www.mr.mortgage. There's no .com. Just type in mr.mortgage. Hit the contact us button and let's talk.